Now, in order to connect your Java program to ChatGPT, the first thing you need is an open API key. And people always mess up finding it because they go to ChatGPT and they start looking under their profile and under settings and they try and find... That's not where you find it. You got to go to a different URL. You got to go to platform.openai.com. You'll see the link for dashboard up in the top right hand corner. Click that and that's going to give you a dash of options. Thus the name dashboard and right at the bottom there you'll see API keys. I've already got one created. You need to create one yourself. So click on that beautiful green button. Give it a name. Spring Boot Chat GPT, and I think I called it book, but I don't care. I'm going to accept all of the defaults. I'm going to create the key, and then a long number comes out. You can do one of two things. You can memorize that, or you can copy it somewhere for reference a little bit later. Don't put it into GitHub. Don't put it somewhere where other people can see it. You don't want to share this key with other people because you don't want them consuming your tokens on ChatGPT. We're going to use that and put that into our application properties of our Spring Boot project that we're about to create. I'm going to leave this window open so that I can come back to it. And I'm going to go into my Spring Source tool suite in Eclipse. You can use IntelliJ, you can use VS Code. I'm not here to judge. I'm going to create a new Spring Spring Starter Project. I'm going to call this Spring GPT-5. That sounds like a, an interesting name. I'll take those as the defaults here. Now, the two things that I'm going to include here are Spring Web. Okay, so I need the Spring Web API. So I'll click on Spring Web right there. And then I'll click on Open AI. So let's see if I can find that. And there's the Open AI link there too. I keep saying Open API because I've done a bunch of tutorials on Swagger and the Open API specifications. So I forgive me if I confuse them in this tutorial, but I think that looks good. I'm going to click next. I'm going to click finish. I'm going to click finish. I'm going to click next. And when this project starts up, I'm going to mosey on over into that application properties file. You can use YAML. Again, I'm not here to judge, but I do need to put a, a little bit of information in here. And what I got to do is I got to set that API key. So I got to say spring, you know, uh, .ai, .open AI. there's an API key and its value is, and by the way, you can use YAML if you want. I'm just going to use the regular properties file, but I'm going to copy that key and I'm going to paste it in there as hard as I can. I'm going to double click and it is far too long for me to show on the screen all at once. Besides, I don't want you to see my API key. Just erase your memory right now. I don't want you to see that. What I do want you to see is I want you to see some of the code that I'm going to write over here in this Java class. Now, if I was a good programmer, I would probably split this application up into multiple files, but I'm not a good programmer, but I like to think I'm a half decent teacher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the code in this one file. I'm going to make this a RESTful application. I'm going to make it a standalone application. Again, probably not a best practice, but I think there's value in being able to see everything on the same page, everything except the, the key, which is in that application properties file. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to implement the command line runner interface. And by doing that, I can just create a runnable method so that I can just write some code and run it and test to see if the API works. Now, did you see that red X there? If you see the red X, you need to get your eyes checked because that is a white X on a red background. But it just says that I hadn't added that unimplemented method. And I'm a person that does what he's told. So I had the tool implement that run method. And that is we're going to be writing the bulk of our code. Now, in order to use the open AI chat interface model, we need to auto wire in an instance of that open AI chat model. Okay, this is one of the classes that comes from 
Spring AI. It helps us interact and query chat GPT. As long as it's got that API token there, it can connect to open AI and uh, Marshall requests back and forth. Now, do you see that red X there? I'm just trolling. I got to do organize my imports control shift. Oh, okay. Now I've got my API key. I've got to reference the open AI chat model. Well, now what do I do? Well, I just got to create a, a prompt. So I say prompt, prompt equals, oh, what should I do here? Oh, maybe new keyword. That would be good. So prompt, prompt equals new prompt. And I'll say, hey, um, tell me a programmer joke that is funny. Why did the two methods break up? Because they had constant arguments. That's a good one, but we'll see if it comes up with that. Now, that's the, the prompt object. The next thing we do is we get a response object from chat GPT. The object type is chat response. And so we get a chat response. I'll call it response. And of course you gotta spell it correctly, which is one of the things that does bother me about spring, but I'm getting used to it. And I just say to the chat model, Hey, chat model, um, take that prompt and, uh, just get a chat response for me. Now, again, see that red X there. Um, I just got to organize those imports and all of a sudden those errors go away. Now it's not just chat model, uh, and then give the prompt. It's actually call. We've got a call chat GPT with that prompt. Now, that gives us a response object and that response object buried inside of it. If we go through the result and then get the output and get the content specifically about the output, that'll tell us a, a programmer joke. So this is a, a daisy chain uh, of methods here, but I say system dot out dot print on. I've got the response from chat GPT. So I want to print out the response. Now, if you print out the response, you end up getting a whole bunch of JSON, a whole bunch of metadata that tells you how many tokens were consumed and what it cost you and um, all this other metadata, what uh, version of chat GPT generated. It's like all this junk. You got to kind of dig in to get the, the meat out of there. So you got to go response dot get result dot get output dot get content <laughs> as i said it's it's buried in there just a, a little bit but that is the the general idea now again it's barking that i didn't spell system right and i really think that the tool should be able to figure that out i mean we're talking about the world of ai and it can't even do a little spell check uh, spell correction for me so again spring java try and do better there but Anyways, I think this is it. I'm practically done here. What do I have to do at this point? Well, I could probably right click and say run as a spring boot app. That should bring the console window up and hopefully I don't have to be consoled too much. It looks like spring is running and all of a sudden it says, why do programmers prefer dark mode? Because light attracts bugs. That is such a funny joke. I can't, I forgot to laugh. Okay. I'm doing just a very quick interruption here. A couple of things. Uh, you know, the YouTube algorithm hates me for some reason right now. If you're enjoying this video, if you could like subscribe and even leave a comment, I would really love to hear from you and, and find out if you've enjoyed this. It'll also help wake up the YouTube algorithm and maybe give my, my channel and my videos a little bit more exposure. So I would really appreciate that. The other thing too, is I got a new copy of Hibernate Made Easy coming out, the best-selling book. I've updated it for version seven of Hibernate. So if you're into JPA, Spring Data, Spring JDBC, uh, please sign up for my mailing list. You don't have to buy it, but uh, I'll be raffling off some free copies for members of my newsletter. Um, and I'll also be making uh, chapters available through the newsletter as well. So sign up for that. There's a link in the description. And finally, I helped out with some final edits on Darcy DeClute Scrum Master Certification Guide. So if you're agile and you're working with Scrum and you're interested in getting Scrum Master certified, a lot of people have been using this book to score 100% on the product owner and Scrum Master exam. So it's available on Amazon. Go pick that up. Uh, I know Darcy would be very happy if you did. Okay, that's it. I'm really sorry to, to bother you. Let's get back into the coding. Okay, it's working.
right? We're actually going to the database now. I mean, if you really want to up your game, you know, I guess you could always put in rest controller here, right? And expose this through a, a restful API and then I don't know, maybe right over here, we could do a little razzle dazzle. We can throw a get mapping in here and say, hey, we want to, you know, get a, a joke dynamically. Again, got to spell things correctly. And what we'll do here is we'll ask a user for a type of joke. So we'll say to the user, um, tell me what type of joke you want. So do you want a dad joke? Do you want a programmer joke? Something like that. Something to just make this a little more interesting than just constant programmer jokes. So, I mean, now it's just a matter of, of coding this, right? So we create a, a, a public method. It's going to return a string. We'll call it funny jokes. And of course, since this is a, a RESTful API, that's going to have data sent to it. Um, we're going to have to add a little annotation here that says the type of joke is going to come through the request parameter. So we'll say at request param. Let's get the type of joke that we want. Uh, control shift O to get rid of those uh, ugly lines. I still got some red, but it looks like my grade 12 English paper. I've got a, a few red lines there, but that's because I'm not returning uh, anything yet, right? If I typed in return null, it would probably go away. But let's just actually write some code here. Like there were no red squiggles underneath. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an input string by using string.format. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a sentence here that says, tell me a percentage S joke, right? And I want that filled in on the fly um, with the type, right? So if somebody says they want a dad joke, I'll put a dad joke in. They want a programmer joke in, I'll put a programmer joke in. That'll get passed into the method. Once it goes into the method with that name type, because we're going to get that from the client. Well, we'll insert it into the string. Now we've got a uh, a string that, you know, um, can vary a little bit. And then now it's all just the, the same stuff here, right? Like, um, I can just copy this code in here because it's not going to change too much. We don't want to hard code that prompt in. We just want to take that input string that we've created. And once we've got that response, well, we don't want to simply print it out to the console. We want to return that to the client. Now, if I click control S, oh, I've still got errors because uh, do they still require semicolons in Java? I think they do. I throw that in and look, all of this code looks very, very handsome. I think I can come up here and say, do a quick restart and I'll see spring restart. Now we still get the run because we ran the application, but in theory, I should be able to go over here and say local host colon 8080 slash joke. Was it joke singular, joke plural? It's a joke singular. I can say take type equals uh, dad jokes. So we'll ask for a dad joke. I got a, 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 a Python joke for you. We could say type uh, equals Python. The answer to that question is Python is a joke. There we go. Okay, let's get a dad joke. Let's ask. And it says, why can't you give Elsa a balloon? Because she will let it go. Okay. It's a good joke, I guess. Um, I don't know. At this point in time, you know, what else could you do? Uh, the last thing I would say is, I mean, this is not a, an HTML programming uh, series here, but we got that static folder there. I'm going to create uh, a new file and I'm going to call this index.html. So I'll click finish there. And, you know, we could always come over here, take a look at our code and say, hey, you know, ChatGPT, um, write me an HTML page with JavaScript that will call this REST API and uh, allow the user to select dad or programming or what kind of jokes are there or um, 
knock, knock jokes. Here is the Spring API, so we'll see what comes out here. But we'll give it a, a second. Does it bother us? Does it like us? Does it hate us? Oh, it looks like it's going. Okay, is it going to call our method for us? I don't know. I'm not a JavaScript developer. I'm not an HTML developer. I'm not much of a Spring Boot developer, to be totally honest with you. Um, but I'm going to throw that in there. Looks like we got a little JavaScript, a little Ajax there, a little going through. It was actually born in a town called Ajax, by the way. Uh, and I don't know, dad jokes. Will this work? Is this going to uh, function properly? Well, there's one way to find out. That's in index.html. I'm going to click the yin yang button there, the stop and restart, the red and the green, the square and the triangle. That's going to start my application up again. That calls the command line interface. Why do programmers prefer dark mode? But that's not what I want to do. I want to come over here and see if there is an index HTML page and there is and now if I can ask for a knock knock joke and say get joke it says sure here's a classic one for you knock knock who's there let us let us who let us in it is freezing out here and there you go that's how easy it is to connect your Java applications your spring boot applications to chat GPT